All right, are you ready? In this video, we are going to dive into our own implementation of a lazily evaluated, potentially infinite, singly linked stream. Let's get right to it. Now, from the uh, lazy evaluation lecture, I'm just going to copy the requirements of this exercise and paste them into a dedicated Scala source file because uh, we're going to write quite a bunch of code. So under the exercise package, I'm going to say new uh, Scala class. and I'm going to call this streams playground or yeah, let's call this streams uh, playground. Make this an object and make it extend app and let's paste the um, the requirements of this exercise with the abstract class with all the method definitions here and the companion object with the unimplemented uh, from factory method. All right. So for the purpose of this exercise, we are going to implement the subclasses of this uh, covariant abstract class my stream using lazy values. All right, so I'm in presentation mode so you can see my code more clearly. And we're going to start the solution to this exercise by defining the subtypes of this my stream. Now, because my stream is singly linked and because it's covariant, it makes sense to consider just two subtypes, the empty stream and the non empty stream. So we're just going to declare an object called empty stream which extends my stream nothing extends with a single D my stream of type nothing because my stream is covariant. All right. So let me just like copy all these methods and dump them here where the type parameter a is actually nothing in empty stream. So let me just quickly replace a with nothing. All right. Cool. And I'm also going to supply some really not implemented implementations. And I'm going to just copy and paste this all around. All right, we're going to implement them uh, really quickly and um, really shortly. Um, we uh, won't waste too much time on um, these guys because they will be really straightforward. So this was the empty stream object and we are going to implement as well the non empty stream. So we're just going to say class cons of type a or type plus a extends my stream a. All right, so we're just going to dump all these methods again. Cool. And the cons will take some um, actual values. So we are going to have the head, which is of type A, and a tail, which is of type, watch what I'm writing, by name my stream A. This is very important and it will uh, help in lazily evaluating the stream. All right. So um, we're already implementing a very, uh, very important part of our solution here. Without the call by name, the um, stream will not be uh, lazily evaluated. And whenever we build some uh, con stream, then the tail will always uh, be eagerly evaluated, which will likely crash our program in the case of infinite streams. So we want to be very, very careful about this particular thing. All right, so we have quite a bit of work ahead of us, but it's not really all that bad. As always, let's start with the empty version of the stream because the implementations are going to be really straightforward. So what is the value of is empty on an empty stream? Well, it's obviously true. Head and tail are just going to throw exceptions because there are no elements in an empty stream. So let's just throw new no such element exception or something like that. All right, again here. So again, is empty head and tail are really, really straightforward. Now prepending an element to an empty stream will lead into creating a cons. So that will be 
new cons with element and this. All right. And concatenating another stream to an empty stream will just return that stream. All right, so really, really straightforward. Now, for each, we'll just return the unit, which again is denoted by this literal here, parenthesis, parenthesis, because there is no, there are no elements for which we can apply this function from nothing to unit. All right, mapping and flat mapping will just return this stream because again, there are no elements to map and flat map. So the result of mapping and flat mapping will still return the empty stream, which is this. And filtering, again, will return the empty stream because there's nothing to filter. Now, taking the first n elements out of this empty stream will still return an empty stream, no matter how many elements I might want to extract. And take as list will simply return nil because that is the list of nothing. All right, so empty stream was done in, what, a minute? So this is pretty cool. This uh, empty stream shouldn't pose too many problems. The cons is going to be a little more interesting because we're going to see the effects of call by name and lazy vals in practice. So uh, is empty, of course, is going to be false in uh, the case of the non-empty stream because by definition, it contains something. Uh, head, I'm going to overwrite that as a val, which is this parameter here with a head. I'm overwriting that as a val because I might need it uh, more than one, uh, more than once throughout the implementation. So I wanted to uh, evaluate it as a value so that I can then reuse it throughout the entire body. All right. Now, as for tail. I'm going to overwrite that instead of a def, I'm going to overwrite that into a lazy val, which is the value of the tail parameter here. So notice that I'm overwriting head and tail as a val and as a lazy val. So uh, if you remember from the previous video, combining a call by name parameter with a lazy val inside the implementation is called call by need. And call by need is the technique that we are going to use in the cons implementation here. Now let's uh, implement the other methods. So the prepend operator is just going to return a new cons with element and this. So basically when I write, uh, let's break this down a little bit just to uh, explain how this operator works with while still preserving the lazy evaluation. So if I say val uh, some um, uh, stream equals, I don't know, new uh, cons with one and empty stream, then the empty stream is lazily evaluated, so empty stream will not be evaluated inside cons until it's needed. So when I then say prepended equals one hash colon s, then that will construct a new cons with one and s, but s will still be lazily evaluated, so whatever is uh, at the tail of s will still remain unevaluated when the prepend operator acts. All right. So the lazy evaluation is preserved at the uh, application of the prepend operator. Okay. The concatenation here uh, operator works on the same principle because this will construct a new cons with the head, with this guy's head. And as a lazily evaluated tail, the tail will be tail plus another stream. So tail will be lazily evaluated and it will only be uh, evaluated by need because this expression is still lazily evaluated because it's called by name. 
all right? So this guy will only be evaluated when it's needed, and that will invoke the evaluation of tail again when it's needed. So the application of the uh, plus plus concatenation operator still preserves lazy evaluation in the stream. This is extremely important. Now the classics for each. Well, for each will force the evaluation of basically every single value inside this stream because we're going to apply f with a head and we are going to apply tail for each f. So basically we'll evaluate every single value inside this stream. Now mapping will not need to do that because the result of it for map is going to be a new cons with the new head as being f of head and as the lazily evaluated tail, that will be tail map f. So this expression is uh, under call by name, so when it's needed, it will be evaluated, which will force the evaluation of tail, but this will only evaluate it by need. So map still preserves lazy evaluation. Just to uh, prove this further, let's break this down a little bit. So if I say that a stream is my stream new cons of one and some other stream, which is lazily evaluated, okay, then if I write mapped as s dot map and uh, I don't know, I increment every element by one, then by the definition of map, this will return a new cons with 1 plus 1, which is 2, and then an expression s.tail map the same lambda, but this will not be evaluated unless I somehow use mapped.tail in some later expression. So if I use mapped.tail in a later expression, then that will force the evaluation of this little guy which will in turn evaluate the uh, result of this little guy s.tail, which up until that point was lazily evaluated and unknown. All right, so uh, this will only be evaluated on a by need basis. Just wanted to stress this out. Now let's move to flat map, which is again very straightforward. Flat map will concatenate the application of f on every element of the stream. So basically, the implementation of flat map is going to be f applied to head, concatenated with whatever tail flat map f will give. And because the plus plus operator preserves lazy evaluation like we uh, talked about before, the flat map operator in turn will preserve lazy evaluation. Okay, cool. Now, filter. Uh, let's go to filter. So, if the predicate holds for head, then I'm going to return a new cons with head and whatever the tail filter predicate will give us. Because tail filter predicate is again a by name expression, it will only be evaluated if it's requested at a later point in the application. And because tail is a lazy val, then this whole expression is uh, lazily evaluated, so this preserves lazy evaluation on this if branch. Otherwise, I'm just going to return tail filter predicate. This is a little bit more interesting case because tail filter predicate will uh, force at most the evaluation of the first element in the tail, but the rest of the stream will still be lazily evaluated. So overall, the filter method will preserve lazy evaluation. All right, so for these lazily evaluated uh, methods, take a second to actually prove to yourself how these actually work. All right, I broke down a couple of methods and uh, feel free to do that for uh, your own analysis as well. Now, take is um, going to be uh, pretty straightforward, uh, just like a couple of lines of code. So 
uh, if we want to be extra sure, we can check if n is less than or equal to zero, in which case we'll return the empty stream. Otherwise, if n is equal to one, then I'm just going to return a new cons uh, out of head and uh, empty stream as an optimization. Otherwise, I'm just going to return new cons with head and whatever tail take n minus one will give us. Now, because this expression is a by name expression by the definition of cons and tail being a lazily evaluated value, then this expression here will still preserve lazy evaluation. All right, so the uh, stream take n will still be a lazily evaluated string. All right. Now the take as list method, I can actually uh, implement that in uh, the overall trait by defining a small method called to list. So if I define a little uh, auxiliary method that converts this stream to a list, then by um, passing in a small accumulator function because I want to make this tail rec. Uh, so if I pass in an accumulator, which is a list of A, which is nil, and at the end I'm going to return a list A, then I can use this to list utility function to implement the take as list because I can simply take N and then convert to list. All right, so let's implement this first. First of all, let's fix the compiler errors because um, the type A is covariant, so I need the same typing trick here. So I need to pass in uh, type parameter B, which is a super type of A, and accumulator is a list of B, and the end result is going to be a list of B. And the implementation is going to be pretty straightforward in the sense that if the stream is empty, then I'm just going to return accumulator. Otherwise, I'm going to say tail dot to list with the accumulator being uh, prepended with head. So head colon accumulator. The compiler still complains because to list is not final. Oh yes, because uh, the subtypes of my stream can override to list in a non tail rec fashion. So the compiler complains in the first place. So I need to declare this method as final. And this makes the compiler happy because no other subtypes can um, override to list in a non tail rec fashion. All right, so let's break this down and make sure that this uh, works correctly. So if I have one, two, three, and then I convert to list. Then this guy is, because the stream is not empty, um, well, the accumulator is nil, of course. Uh, then because the stream is not empty, then it will say to three dot to list, and then the head prepended to the result which is because this stream is not empty, it will call to list again on the tail and we'll say to list with the head prepended to the result. So this is in reverse order. So I should say reverse here. And at the end, I'm going to um, end up with an empty stream dot to list with 321 because I'm prepending the head to the accumulator. And finally, because the, uh, the resulting stream is empty, I'm just going to reverse this accumulator here, which is 123. All right, so the to list method works correctly. And uh, I should write take as list as take n dot to list. So just like that, and I can uh, remove take as list from the empty stream and from cons. And I think the compiler should now be happy because I'm, I've implemented all the methods that it required. Cool, so quite a chunk of code. We are only left with implementing the from method in the my stream companion object. This will um, be some kind of factory method. 
and because I have already a start value, then by definition, I'm going to return a non-empty string. So new cons with start and the tail is going to be lazily evaluated and the expression for the tail is going to be my stream from and the um, uh, start here is going to be generator of start so this is going to be the new start value for the tail and supplying the same generator value later all right so this is quite an intricate and quite uh, quite cute method implementation because i'm calling the from method uh, recursively in a lazily evaluated expression all right so let's see this in action so we've uh, written quite a bit of code and uh, we would like to see that it works correctly so if we say that naturals the natural stream of numbers is my stream from one and the generator function x arrow x plus one then this code should run and should not crash in my face all right because this guy is lazily evaluated so i shouldn't be seeing stack overflows or any other errors so let's just print out naturals head which should be one and then print naturals tail head which will be the next number and uh, let's print out just one more naturals tail tail head just to prove how the tail is lazily evaluated only when we need it so i should be seeing one two three all right so i have the numbers here one two three cool now let's test the prepend operator if i have uh, start from zero is zero hash colon colon remember the hash colon colon being um, a method that ends with a colon it will be right associative so i can say zero hash colon colon naturals and this will be rewritten to naturals dot hash colon colon zero but uh, that's the subject of uh, a few videos back then if i print start from zero head then i should be seeing the zero number printed out okay now the place where this code could crash is the take function so if i print line all the numbers starting from zero all the first 10,000 numbers starting from zero and if the code doesn't crash then we probably wrote some corrupt code so let's write start from zero take 10,000 for each print line and this should not crash so as you see we have the first 10,000 numbers starting from zero i'm quite proud that we wrote some uh, really cute code in just less than 100 lines and uh, we extracted 10,000 numbers so we don't have any uh, problems uh, stack overflowing or uh, potentially infinite evaluation and that is because we have combined the call by name and the lazy val in the correct form now let's test the functionals like map and flat map now if we have the start from zero map whatever times two then uh, take a hundred to list and then print line this this guy and let's call to list like a proper uh, method. And if I run this, I should be seeing the first 100 even numbers. 
And I can take however many I want. I can take 100, I can take two, I can take a million, and this code would still run fine. All right, let's uh, test flat map as well. So start from zero, flat map, and um, for every X, let's just create um, a simple uh, finite stream. So uh, new cons from X and X plus one. and um, empty stream all right and then i should see uh, if i take the first 10 and then i take two list then i should see 0 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 and then i think that should be it uh, until the first 10 elements but we have what seems to be a Stack Overflow error. Let's see this. All right, we have a Stack Overflow error. Let's get back to the next video where we fix this and do some more practice.